Welcome back, I'm Robert Breaker, and this week's sermon is going to be on the topic of idol worship and the Bible. Idol worship and the Bible. Now, last week we looked at the major events in the Bible, and I had totally planned on this week looking at the major characters in the Bible. And I want to go through and show you some of the major players in the Bible and who they were and when they lived. But I just couldn't get that together this week. I've had a lot of visitors lately, and that's been wonderful. I enjoy meeting other believers in Christ, and that's great. But uh, sometimes I just can't seem to get together the sermon that I get together. I don't just want to get something. I want to get it together and get it together right and give it to you the best of my ability. So sometimes, like this week, um, I have to do a, a different sermon and something that I'm more prepared with until I'm able to get the other one that I've prepared better. And this week, um, I prayed and said, Lord, I, don't, I, I haven't got it all together yet for that sermon. So what do I talk about this week? And as he always does, the Lord gave me what to speak about this week. And I don't know why, but the Lord woke me up out of a deep sleep and just impressed upon my heart to talk about idol worship. Now, I've done a video on this before, and I, and I don't like doing the same video over, okay? So that video is called Idol Worship, and I actually sit at the computer and show you the verses. And we're going to look at possibly some of the same verses, but we're also going to look at some other verses as well. Because the Lord really laid on my heart this week how awful it is to worship idols. And yet we live in a day and age of people that worship idols. What is an idol? What is idol worship? And what is it really? I mean, does it do any harm? People say, well, people can have their own religion. That's their business. But is there such a thing as a religion that harms other people? As a matter of fact, yes. So I want to talk about that today. Talk to you about the pagan religions and how in paganism, many people were hurt by that false religion because the false religion of paganism is very evil and even satanic. That's why Christianity is so important. Among Christianity, at least there's morals. And you're supposed to have a, a moral fiber. And Christianity teaches people how to do good, not evil. Idol worship comes from paganism, and idol worship is just as evil as you can get. And it's also deceptive. It's so engañoso, as we say in Spanish. It's so deceiving. You have to be deceived to worship an idol. All right? So we're going to look at all that today. And I want to ask the question, is America a pagan nation? Is the United States of America becoming a heathen nation? Are they getting away from God and going back to worshiping idols? Are they becoming pagan once again? There's a TV show, and I've never watched this show, and I hear from other people, they like to watch it. And now, if you're a Christian, I don't think you should be watching this TV show. Uh, it's a program, okay? TV is called Programs. Hmm, almost sounds like they're programming people to do stuff. Yeah, that's, that's what it is. And there's a TV program called American Idol. And what is that doing? That's getting people back into being used to worshiping idols. So let's look at idol worship in the Bible. I want you to see what the Bible and what God says about this and why this is something that God does not want us to engage in. We are just going to have a straight up Bible study today and go from scripture to 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 see where it leads us. And it's going to lead us down a pretty crazy path, okay? So I hope you have your Bible ready. If you have to hit the pause button, hit the pause button to look up these scriptures. But I have a ton of verses, and I just want to go to the scriptures itself. Now, what is an idol? Well, I believe that an idol is also called an image. And I believe that because that's what the Bible says. So it can be an idol made of stone, like a statue, but you can statue... But you can also have like a picture. Now, is it wrong to draw pictures? No, not at all. Is it wrong to paint? No. What makes it an idol is that now you worship that. Now, I draw pictures. I draw on the board all the time. I make images up here. But I'm not telling you to bow down and worship what I draw up on the board. So an image or an idol is something that someone makes, and then they bow down to it, and they say, this is my God. 
Now let's go to Leviticus chapter 26 and verse 1. What does God say about making idols or graven images? Leviticus 26, 1. You shall make you no idols nor graven images. Don't do this one or this one. Now there's kind of a really big religion in the world that claims to be Christians. And they have a whole lot of statues in that religion. Have you ever been inside a, a Roman church? Well, see, the Roman church split many, many years ago with the Greek church. They called themselves the Orthodox. And they use images. The other one uses the statues. I view them as idols. Now, they would say, no, 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 they're just images and aids to worship. Let's continue here in Leviticus chapter 26, verse 1. Ye shall make you no idols nor graven image, neither rear ye up a standing image, neither shall ye set up any image of stone in your land to bow down unto it, for I am the Lord your God. So God says, I don't want you bowing down to statues or images. Now, do you go to some churches nowadays that claim to be Christian, right, of the Orthodox over in the East or uh, more of the West in the Romanists, and you see people go into those churches and look at these pictures and look at these statues and they literally will bow down to them and pray to them. Is that an idol? I believe it is, according to the Bible. Now we've got a lot of verses to get into, so let's flip over to Deuteronomy chapter 7. This is what the pagans used to do. The pagans used to make themselves statues either out of wood or out of stone or out of metal, and we'll see that today. And they would literally worship those as their God. Now people say, well, I'm a Christian, and we have statues, and we have images, and we have things like this, but we don't call them idols. Yeah, but you worship them. Well, no, I'm not worshiping it as God. I'm just praying to it. Well, still, God said not to do that, didn't he? So why are you bowing down to it? It's almost like you're making it into your own idol. Deuteronomy chapter 7 and verse 25, the Bible says this. The graven images of their gods shall ye burn with fire. Thou shalt not desire the silver or gold that is on them, nor take it unto thee, lest thou be snared therein, for it is an abomination to the Lord thy God. So these idols can be a false god. Little g. In fact, many of the gods of the pagans were always represented as an idol or a statue in which they literally worshipped that inanimate object. Let's go over to Exodus chapter 20 now. Exodus chapter 20 is where the Ten Commandments are. Exodus chapter 20, verse 2 through 5. Well, verse 1, And God spake all these words, saying, Now this is where you find the Ten Commandments. I am the Lord thy God, verse 2, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Okay? Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image. So don't have any other gods. And don't make images of those gods that you worship. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children of the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. So idolatry is what? Idolatry, idolatry is abomination to God. And God says, I don't want you to do that because you're making that your own God rather than serving me, the true God. Are we starting to see that in the world? Are we starting to see the world turning against the true God and making their own idols or their own little g-gods? Let's go over to 1 Chronicles 16.26. I just want to take you to as many scriptures as I can, show you what this thing, idol worship, is all about. And I want you to see this for yourself. 1 Chronicles 16, and look at verse 25 and 26. For all the gods of the people are idols. Whoa! So in paganism, their false gods were idols. So they literally were worshipping this piece of stone, or this picture, or this piece of silver, or gold, or wood, and they made that idol their own god. That's pretty sad, because they made it, and then they worship it as though it was God. But who is God? God is the one that made us. So what a dumb thing. 
to make something and say, you are my God that made me. Nuh-uh, you just made that. <laughs> you see how silly and deceptive and strange that is? But in 1 Chronicles 16, 25, For great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. He also is to be feared above all gods. Amen. For all the gods of the people are idols, but the Lord made the heavens. So there's only one true God. And that one true God made all of us. And for us to make now an image and then say, that's my God, that's ludicrous. Because that kicks out the true God. And that's why God calls it an abomination. Why would you worship that instead of the true creator who made all things, the true God? Leviticus chapter 19 and verse 4. And we're going to go to Leviticus 19 and verse 4. And I've got lots of verses. I know it's a lot to turn to, but we're going to keep going through here and seeing this over and over, and I want to connect the dots with you. And this might scare you. I hope not. But Leviticus chapter 19, verse 4 says, Turn ye not unto idols, nor make to yourselves molten gods. I am the Lord your God. Look at that. Molten gods. Isn't that weird? He says, don't make molten gods. So idols can be made of wood, they can be made of stone, they can be made of gold, they can be made of silver. And they can be made of a lot of other things. Molten though, when I think of molten, I think of any metal. And you turn that metal into, I don't know, some sort of a graven image or maybe even um, melted down into a, a mold. I've even seen, I've driven through uh, Louisiana, and I've seen out in people's yards idols made of cement. You ever seen that before? So, God does not want you to worship these false gods. Now, the pagans or the heathens believed in gods, plural. And do you remember ancient mythology? Well, Zeus is the god, and then there's, I don't know, Hercules, which is half god, because he came from Zeus or whatever. And you have all these different names. of Poseidon was that one of them. And I'm not even going to get into that. But when you look at ancient Greek mythology, all of the gods, little g, you know what? They're a bunch of fornicators. And all they do is sit around all day and get drunk in like the Bacchian festivals and, and have orgies and make babies. Where have I heard that in the Bible? Genesis chapter 6. That's your Nephilim. That's your fallen angels. That's the giants, if you will. And the fallen angels mating with the daughters of men and producing the Nephilim. Then we see the giants. So, you got to watch out for that. And as they worship their false gods, they would worship them in the form of idols or statues or images. So they wanted to keep something that was a memento that looked like one of their gods then they could worship their God through that little thing that they had, which was usually a statue. Now, let's go to Psalms chapter 115. Does God like that? Are there many, many, many gods, or is there only one God? Well, according to the Bible, there's only one God. And that one God is the true God, and He is the creator of all things. So all these other little gods with little g's, you know what they are? They are the fallen angels, or the spawn of it. And they're trying to steal worship from the true God through idol worship. Psalms chapter 115, verses 1 through 9. Here's what God thinks about idols. Psalms 115, Not unto us, O Lord, not unto us, but unto thy name give glory, for thy mercy and for thy truth's sake. The psalmist is writing here and saying, Lord, we want to give truth and mercy to you. Wherefore should the heathen say, Where is now their God? But our God is in the heavens. He hath done whatsoever he hath pleased. That's the true God in heaven. These are false gods that are fallen, that are corrupt, and they're down here on earth. Verse 4, their idols are silver and gold, the work of men's hands. Now listen to this. They have mouths, but they speak not. Eyes have they, but they see not. They have ears, but they hear not. Noses they have, but they smell not. They have hands but they handle not. Feet have they, but they walk not. Neither speak they through their throat. They that make them are like unto them, so is every one that trusteth in them. 
Why would you put your faith and trust in a piece of stone or a piece of gold, in some inanimate object that is nothing? Because that's not the true God. Verse 9, O Israel, trust thou in the Lord. He is their help and their shield. I've never understood how people could worship idols where there's only one true God to worship, and that's the one God in heaven. Now, Israel was different than the heathen. Israel was looked down upon by many of the ancient uh, nations because all the nations of the world had many different gods, and you could just choose which one you wanted to pray to. And you would, you know, have your little statue of that one god. But you, you knew there were many different ones, and many of the pagans worshipped many different gods. But they looked down upon Israel, the people of God, because they said, no, 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 there's only one God, and we believe in him. We don't believe in many gods. They were not polytheistic, as were the heathen. Yet over time, do you know what happened? Let's go to 2 Kings chapter 17. Over time, Israel, when they became a nation, they began to look around at the world, and they began to go, you know, I like kind of how the world does it. And they began to let people into their borders that worshipped other gods. And they allowed that mixture of all these cultures coming in. I guess they had open borders, I guess you could say. And because of that, they brought in with them these false gods. And the people of Israel, the nation of Israel, fell into apostasy as the people accepted those false gods. Kind of like, I don't know, like what we're seeing today in America with our open borders and allowing anybody and their grandmother to come in. They're bringing their culture, they're bringing in their statues, their images, and their idols. Wow, if God was angry at Israel back then for that, do you think God might be angry at America for that? America used to be a Christian nation. We stood and said, no, there is the one true God. Now it's like America is accepting any God. They're even making their own gods, their own idols, American idol. But in 2 Kings chapter 17, let's read verse 7 through 12. 2 Kings 17, 7, and I want you to see where they worshipped. They usually worshipped their gods on a hill. They usually worshipped on a high place, a hill or a high place. Now, why would they go up there? Hmm. Why would they go up somewhere high? Well, 2 Kings 17, 7, for so it was that the children of Israel had sinned against the Lord their God, which had brought them up out of the land of Egypt from under the hand of Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and had feared other gods, and walked in the statutes of the heathen whom the Lord cast out from before the children of Israel, and of the kings of Israel which they had made. And the children of Israel did secretly those things that were not right against the Lord their God, and they built them high places in all their cities, from the tower of the watchman to the fenced city. And they set them up images, well, an image, and groves in every high hill and under every green tree. Well, now we see the term grove. What is a grove? Well, a grove is like a whole bunch of trees planted in one place. And they would go up and they, they would plant groves in these places. And they would have places where they'd have all these trees and they would hide in the grove. You ever heard of Bohemian Grove? <laughs> uh, maybe look that up sometime. Bohemian Grove, see what they do there. But they would worship in these groves and they would kind of like hide their little images. And then they, they, they kind of felt like, hey, we're in secret. Almost like they were a secret society, if you will. And they'd have their little hiding place out in the woods where they could go to find their false god. Because they knew, you know, uh, many of those fundamentalists out there would say, hey, that's sin to worship that. So they kind of wanted to get away in secret and worship in secret. And so it says there in verse 10, And they set them up images and groves in every high hill and under every green tree. And there they burnt incense in all the high places, as did the heathen whom the Lord carried away before them, and wrought wicked things to provoke the Lord to anger. For they served idols. Wherefore the Lord had said unto them, You shall not do this thing. Yet the Lord testified against Israel and against Judah by all the prophets and by all the seers, saying, Turn ye from your evil ways. So idol worship is evil. And so that's not something that God says to do. Idol worship is evil. I'm going to put three exclamation points on that one. 
and there's a lot of evil that comes along with idol worship. You know, it's not just it's not just somebody having it and just praying to it. There's things that go along with idol worship. There's initiations. That's why oftentimes they did it in secret because they did things in secret that they didn't want other people to see. And we're going to get into that here in a moment. So here we have the Bible telling us that the people of Israel did evil. And they're told by the prophets, Turn ye from your evil ways and keep my commandments and my statutes according to all the law which I commanded your fathers, which I sent to you by my servants the prophets. Notwithstanding, they would not hear, but hardened their necks like to the neck of their fathers and did not believe in the Lord their God. So they chose other gods. Man, that's awful. Now, again, Leviticus 26 and verse 30. Again, we see them going up onto the high places to worship. Now, why would they do that? Well, angels are from up above. So they're going up there to try to get in touch with what they're calling their gods, the fallen angels. The Bible talks about spiritual wickedness in high places. You ever heard of that? Leviticus chapter 26 in verse 30, look at what the Bible says. And I will destroy your high places. God is telling him he's going to judge them. I will destroy your high places, cut down your images, and cast your carcasses above the carcasses of your idols, and my soul shall abhor you. God is telling them, hey, if you run to the false gods, the fallen angels, and you worship them, uh, you're going to die with them. And my soul will abhor you, because God says to me, that's an abomination. Let's go to Ezekiel now. Ezekiel chapter 6. I want to show you this, because what we're going to see is the more they worshiped idols, the worse it becomes. It's not just, hey, let's just go worship an idol. Oh, I pray to you, idol. Okay, and go away. There's a lot of evil involved in becoming a heathen, and becoming a pagan. It's the direction of Satanism, is what it is. Because Satanists love to do what they do when they sacrifice to idols. And I want you to see, it all goes to sacrifice. Let's see this. Ezekiel chapter 6 and verse 6. Ezekiel 6, 6. In all your dwelling places the city shall be laid waste, and the high places shall be desolate, that your altars may be laid waste and made desolate, and your idols may be broken and cease, and your images may be cut down, and your works may be abolished. God says, I, I'm not going to put up with idol worship. I don't want it. Verse 13, Then shall you know that I am the Lord, when their slain men shall be among their idols, round about their altars, upon every high hill, and all the tops of the mountains, and under every green tree, and under every thick oak, the place where they did offer sweet savor to their idols. So we're starting to see a pattern here. They would worship up on top of a mountain or in a hill someplace. They wanted to be far away from everyone else. Or they'd go deep into the forest, into a grove, and hide and worship their idols there. They wanted to do things that they didn't want other people to see them doing. Could it be they were doing something evil? Could it even be maybe they were killing people? Yeah, we'll see that here in a minute. And that's awful. Let's go to Judges chapter 3 and let me show you some more. Let's look at these groves here. Judges chapter 3. Again, maybe you should look into this thing called Bohemian Grove. See what that's all about. Because that's pretty modern. That's been around for the last hundred years or so. And it's a thing where people get together to worship Moloch, which is an idol, a giant owl. Judges chapter 3 and verse 7. In Judges chapter 3 and verse 7, look what it says. And the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord, and forgot the Lord their God, and served Balaam and the groves. So we see groves, and we see worshiping of a false god, and that false god's name was Baal. But here it says Balaam. In Hebrew, when you have an I am on the end, that I am is a plural, M. That means more than one. Baal is Beelzebub, Satan. And Satan has others that fell with him. So there's more than one. Starting to look like these false gods might be those angels that Satan deceived into falling with him. But notice what it says there in the groves. Let's go to 1 Kings chapter 16. 
Um, we're going somewhere with all this, so stick with me. First Kings chapter 16, verse 33. I want you to see this. First Kings 16, 33. The Bible says, And Ahab made a grove. And Ahab did more to provoke the Lord God of Israel to anger than all the kings of Israel that were before him. Wow. Now, that's amazing. But what did he do? He made a grove. He planted a bunch of trees, and he put some sort of a statue in there. And do you think it was just a nice little park to go to? No, they would do satanic rituals in that place. 2 Kings chapter 17, verse 16. 2 Kings 17, 16. Look what it says here. 2 Kings 17, 16. And they left all the commandments of the Lord their God and made them molten images. Here's your molten images. Even two calves and made a grove. Now watch this. And worshipped all the host of heaven and served Baal. So, a host is connected with this. Hmm. So there's a host that's connected to this. Host of heaven. Well, that's where the fallen angels would have come from. So they came from heaven. And they're worshiping all of heaven. Well, did you know that the pagans worship stars? I watched a neat video the other day, and it talked about how most of your pagans, they always had stars that they worshiped. And many of the, the Satanists evil people in those false religions of those uh, heathen nations, many of them were um, into astrology and things like that. Let's flip over to 2 Kings 21.3. 2 Kings 21.3, look what it says. For he built up again the high places which Hezekiah his father had destroyed, and he reared up altars for Baal. Baal would be Satan. So it's Satan worship. And made a grove as did Ahab king of Israel, and worshipped all the hosts of heaven, and served them. So this host of heaven sounds like the fallen angels. Now, the groves are where they worship their false god. How did they worship? How did they worship? Well, as you go to the Bible and you look up all this, you find out that the mode of worship when it comes to worshipping idols was with nakedness. Now do you see why they'd go way up in the mountain to get away from everybody? Now do you see why they'd go and, and hide themselves in the groves? Because they know they're going to do something bad. And they don't want just anybody coming by and watching them being naked and doing bad stuff. Because what's the kind of stuff they do? Fornication. So they get together in a place where they can hide and fornicate. And that is paganism. It's orgies. Just like the Greek mythology. All the orgies. Just like Rome. And Rome was a center of paganism. In Rome, there was drunkenness and debauchery and, and, and all this kind of orgies and stuff. That's how they worshiped their false gods. And you know what's worse? They would sacrifice the babies to their false gods. Scary. Very scary. But let's look at this. Go now to Exodus chapter 32. Exodus chapter 32, we see the children of Israel. They came out of Egypt. And then Moses was gone so long, they said, well, let's just go back to worshiping the gods of, of the Egyptians. And look what it says, Exodus chapter 32. Exodus 32, 24. And I said unto them, Whosoever hath any gold, let them break it off. So they gave it me. Then I cast it into the fire, and there came out this calf. So there's your molten gold making a, a calf. And Moses came down and saw them worshiping this calf. And then it says in the next verse, And when Moses saw that the people were naked, for Aaron had made them naked unto their shame among their enemies, then Moses stood in the gate of the camp and said, Who is on the Lord's side? Let him come unto me. And all the sons of Levi gathered themselves together unto him. Now I'm not going to read what happened next. But guess what? They were all fornicating. They got naked and began to have orgies to their false gods. In 1 Corinthians chapter 10, Paul reminds us of this and what happened that day. And he talks about it. And he says, hey, don't, don't do that. Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 10. Because God judged that place. And God judged those people for worshiping altars of, of paganism. For worshiping false gods with an altar to a golden calf. And, and remember that, though? Oh, uh, the calf. If you, if you ever look at Egypt... You'll see they worship the sun god. Well, the sun is in heaven, and it looks something like that. 
and here's what the the sun looked like and it had horns like a calf around it if you remember that maybe you do maybe you don't so they that's why they worshiped uh, calves and things like that that's why it was a, a molten calf and so you look at all this stuff and you read your Bible and you say man that's evil what is that Sun well the Sun is up in heaven so they're worshiping the Sun rather than the S-O-N Jesus Christ they're worshiping the S-U-N just the big old ball in the heaven but in 1st Corinthians chapter 10 verse 6 through 8 Paul tells us what happened to these fornicators who were worshiping that false God 1st Corinthians 10 6 now these things were our examples to the intent we should not lust after evil things as they also lusted so this is all about lust and look what it says here as they also lusted neither be ye idolaters as were some of them as it is written the people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play how did they play they fornicated neither let us commit fornication as some some of them committed and fell in one day three and twenty thousand Three and twenty thousand, twenty three thousand people. God judged them, and they died in one day for that sin of worshiping Satan through an orgy, worshiping an idol. Hmm. You didn't know that was in the Bible, did you? Let's go to Revelation chapter two and verse fourteen. Well, how about in the New Testament? Do people still worship idols? Yeah, in the New Testament, we saw some people worshiping idols, and even today, there are people that worship idols. You go over to India. I'm told there's over a million gods in India. And they have an idol to every one of them. And I've never been to India, but you go to India, you'll see all everywhere you go in India, you'll find a little statue and people giving it offerings and things like that. Huh. Revelation chapter 2 and verse 14. But I have a few things against thee, because thou hast them there that hold to the doctrine of Balaam, who taught Balak to cast a stumbling block before the children of Israel, to eat things sacrificed unto idols, and to commit fornication so nakedness involved and eating is involved something to do with eating what do they eat well sometimes they just eat food but a lot of times there's drunkenness so a lot of times there's liquor and it's easier to get person to get them um, undressed and naked by getting them drunk so in a lot of these worshipings, um, they get people drunk. A lot of times they use liquor and alcohol and wine and things like that. So we see fornication. We see all this stuff involved, and it's basically worshipping the devil. How do you worship the devil? Well, if you're a Satanist, you know, do as thou wilt is the whole of the law. And oftentimes Satanists will get together and have orgies. And they just give in to the to the flesh. That's not what Christianity is. It's supposed to be follow the Holy Spirit, not follow an unclean spirit. So we see lust. So we see that the way of idol worship is the way to Satanism. Okay? Now let's go to 1 Kings chapter 15. If that's all there was to it, that's pretty bad, isn't it? But it doesn't stop there. It's not just sex between a man and a woman. It's not just fornicating amongst themselves. It's even more. It goes into the more what some people would call perverse sins. 1 Kings chapter 15 and verse 12. Look at what the Bible says. And he took away the Sodomites out of the land and remove all the idols that his fathers had made. In these groves, there are sodomites. What is a sodomite? Someone who does sodomy. What is sodomy? I'd rather not talk about it. Uh, it's something that, to me, is really gross. Because uh, you go to the bathroom, that doesn't smell good. The last thing I would want is to engage in some sort of sexual activity in which I smear feces all over me. To me, that's unclean. That's gross. But let's turn over to 2 Kings chapter 23 and let me show you what these people did. 2 Kings chapter 23. 2 Kings 23, verse 4 through 7. 
Verse 4 says, And the king commanded Hilkiah, the high priest, and the priests of the second order, and the keepers of the door, to bring forth out of the temple of the Lord all the vessels that were made for Baal, and for the grove, and for all the host of heaven. Uh, okay, that's this, this group over here, the pagans. And he burned them without Jerusalem in the fields of Kidron, and carried the ashes of them into Bethel. And he put down the idolatrous priests whom the kings of Judah had ordained to burn incense in the high places in the city of Judah. There's your high places. And it says there, and in the places round about Jerusalem, that also, them also that burned incense unto Baal, to the sun, to the moon, to the planets, and to the, all the hosts of heaven. But he brought out the grove from the house of the Lord without Jerusalem unto the brook Kidron, and burned it all at the brook Kidron, and stamped it small to powder, and cast the powder thereof upon the graves of the children of the people. Now watch this. And he brake down the houses of the Sodomites that were by the house of the Lord, where the women wove hangings for the growth. Sodomites, trying to get as close as they can to the true God, but still they didn't worship the true God. They worshiped their false gods. I'm sure they tried to get into the synagogue to try to get other people to come serve them. Uh, Paul talked about something like that. He says, wolves in sheep's clothing. People trying to be pretending they're something they're not to try to get in and then pull astray to get disciples after themselves, carry people to with them. So they worshiped in groves. Now you just change one letter and groves becomes graves. <laughs> and we read that, that they didn't realize what they were doing, but it led to them being, what, someone that died early because of their sin of going against the true God, and it led to an early grave. So that's what the Bible teaches about this thing, and it gets worse. If that's all it was, that's still, we look at that and kind of go, ooh, that, that seems a little gross. But that's not all. Idols are not just something that you just choose one day to wake up to worship. It is literally worshiping Satan, Balaam, Baal. But it's also worshiping demons or devils. The Bible calls them devils. Today we call them demons. But they're in the Bible, they're called unclean spirits. Well, that would make sense why they're doing things that are unclean and they're, you know, soiling themselves with feces in the things that they're doing in secret in those groves. And look at this. Let's go to Exodus chapter 34. Exodus chapter 34. I believe, and I believe the Bible teaches this, behind every idol is a devil. Now, I don't know how to draw an idol, so just pretend this is some sort of an idol here. Pretend this is an idol made of gold. Behind every gold idol is an unclean spirit. Or a devil. And those things are there, and they want you to worship that. Because that is in the material world, but in the spirit world, they're right there behind it, seeing who's going to worship us so that I can go pray upon them. You know what the Bible calls demons or devils? Unclean spirits. It also calls them seducing spirits. Seducing. Seducing spirits. And seducing spirits are there to what? Make you lust. A lot of people, this is sad. Go to the internet and use it for evil rather than good. And there's a lot of people that are hooked on pornography. They go to the internet and look at dirty pictures of naked people. They go to their little private browser, like these people try to get away in private and hide, right? And they go and they make in their heart an idol of another person. And they lust after those people. Do you think there might be some demons there trying to get people to look at that kind of stuff? You say, well, idols are only gold and silver. No, an idol is whatever you make in your heart that you love more than Jesus. You better get rid of those idols out of your heart, especially out of your life if you actually have some other ones. It's just sad to see that people don't understand who's behind all this stuff. It's satanic. It's demonic. You need to get away from idols. Exodus chapter 34 and verse 11. Observe thou that which I command thee this day. Behold, I drive out before thee the Amorite, and the Canaanite, and the Hittite, and the Perizzite, and the Hivite, and the Jebusite. 
Take heed to thyself, lest thou make a covenant with the inhabitants of the land, whither thou goest, lest it be for a snare in the midst of thee. A lot of people are, are in a snare right now, a snare of the devil. But ye shall destroy their altars, break their images, and cut down their groves. For thou shalt worship no other god. For the Lord, whose name is Jealous, is a jealous god. Verse 15. Lest thou make a covenant with the inhabitants of the land, and they go a-whoring after their gods. You know what a whore is? Someone who lives to have sex. That's a whore. After their gods, and do sacrifice unto their gods, and one call thee, and thou eat of his sacrifice. And thou take of their daughters unto thy sons, and their daughters go a-whoring after their gods. And make thy sons, it says, go a-whoring after their gods. So, leading them into whoredom. Leading them into sexual perversion, sexual sins. That is the direction that idols put you on. But did you catch that? Sacrifice. When you worship an idol, there's some sacrifice involved. And many of the pagans would do what we call human sacrifice. They would literally kill human beings and babies oftentimes, babies, and sacrifice them to their false gods. Who were they really worshiping? Satan. So idol worship and paganism and the heathen, they worship false gods through many different means, through murder, through sexual perversion, through fornication, through sodomy, through many different ways they would worship their gods. And oftentimes they would do it by killing the innocent. Now, I'm not a Satanist, and I don't want to go that route. I want nothing to do with the devil. But there was a man named Aleister Crowley, and he came out and wrote many books and became a Satanist and tried to, to get people to turn to Satanism. And Anton LaVey was a follower of his that wrote the Satanic Bible. Well, Aleister Crowley said, I am the beast. That's what he called himself. And he practiced witchcraft, and he practiced all this uh, satanic stuff, going back to the pagan religions, and he practiced buggery. And when you begin to study this man, he said he got power from the dark side by sodomizing the innocent, usually little children. And that's what Satanism does. It, it attacks the innocent ones to steal their innocence. Who would want to do that? I don't know. Satan? Turn with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 10. And all throughout history, and this cannot be denied, but in history, all these nations that worship false gods and worship idols, they would do human sacrifice. That's evil. Who could have been behind that? And who were they sacrificing their idols to? 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 18 through 22, Paul says these words. Behold, Israel after the flesh are not they which eat of the sacrifices, partakers of the altar. What say I then, that the idol is anything, or that which is offered and sacrificed to idols is anything? But I say that the things which the Gentiles sacrifice, they sacrifice to devils and not to God. And I would not that ye should have fellowship with devils. You cannot drink the cup of the Lord or the cup of devils. You cannot be partakers of the Lord's table and of the devil's table. So there's a table there. That's interesting. And so they have this table. Now, I look around in the world today and I look for these idols because I don't want to have anything to do with them. And, you know, it's interesting that I see uh, there's this giant church that claims to be Christian that centers it all around the table and all about drinking something. And what do they drink? They drink wine. And then they say, hey, let's eat of this sacrifice that they do, and they call it the host, <laughs> or in Spanish, the hostia. Have you ever been to a Mass, a Roman Catholic Mass? Oftentimes you go to the Catholic Mass, and you'll see what they have, they call the hostia, and it's inside of a little thing that looks like a sun. What? We just read that they worship the sun and the host of heaven. And then they say, eat it and drink it. And you say, but what is this? They say it's the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. And who's doing it? Priests. That doesn't sound too Christian to me. That's why I'm not a Roman Catholic, because that just sounds too close to paganism. What are you, killing Jesus all over again? My Bible says he died once and for all. 
and that it's his death on the cross that saves us, not somebody else killing Jesus in a sacrifice. But I go back to 1 Corinthians 10 here and notice what he says. He says, they sacrifice unto devils. So who is behind idol worship? Devils. I would be very, very, very leery to go to a place that has idols and does things like this. I believe that behind each idol is a devil, a seducing spirit, or a demon, or an unclean spirit. And I believe it's evil. Let's go over to uh, Exodus chapter 14. And God, uh, Ezekiel, excuse me, Ezekiel chapter 14, and verse 6 and 8. And God in the Old Testament told his people, hey, stay away from idols. Stay away from these images. Don't even have them. You shouldn't have statues of things in your church. That's not right, according to the Bible. Ezekiel 14, 6. Therefore say unto the house of Israel, Thus saith the Lord God, Repent and turn yourselves from your idols, and turn away your faces from all your abominations. For every one of the house of Israel, or of the stranger that sojourneth in Israel, which separated himself from me, and setteth up his idols, now watch this, in his heart. Hmm. So it's not just an outward idol. If you begin to worship idols, then they'll be in your heart. And there's a lot of people in this world that set up idols in their heart that they worship. But it says, these idols in your heart. And it says, uh, And put it the stumbling block of his iniquity before his face, and cometh to a prophet to inquire of him concerning me. I, the Lord, will swear by myself. Now, let's go to uh, Revelation chapter 9. And here's a question for you. Do you think that we'll ever get to the point in which the world will turn so much against God that all the nations of the world begin to worship idols again and even do human sacrifices? Well, I hate to think that, but yes, I truly believe that the world is going to turn so much against God, and that's sad, and we shouldn't, because we know there's all through the Bible, every time they turn to false gods, they were judged by God. So if you turn to these idols, God will judge you. That's what the Bible teaches. But I believe we're going to see in this world people turning to these and turning away from God. And that's awful. And look what it says here in Revelation chapter 9 and verse 20. Revelation 9, 20. And the rest of the men which were not killed by these plagues, yet repented not of the works of their hands, that they should not worship devils and idols of gold and silver and brass and stone and of wood, which neither can see nor hear nor walk, neither repented they of their murders, nor of their sorceries, nor of their fornication, nor of their thefts. Sorceries, that's witchcraft. Witchcraft, if you don't know what witchcraft is, and I hope you don't, is using these spirits, speaking to them, chants and, and spells, and making agreements and contracts with the devil, and saying, hey, if you do this for me, I'll do this for you. And that's the way to Satan. And it starts with a nice little idol. And it starts with just a little idol or image. And people say, oh, I know that's not real, but there's nothing big around that. But then you begin to worship it. And you set that up in your heart as a symbol that you worship. But notice what it said there in Revelation chapter 9. There were plagues. God sent plagues upon man for their worshiping of devils and idols. Could AIDS be, I don't know, the judgment of God? What are the plagues? Could STDs, could the corona be part of this? The judgment of God on America and on the world for their going back to worshiping idols? You say, well, Brother Breaker, I, I don't see ever again that the world is going to become completely pagan like it was in the old days where they're literally sacrificing human beings. I, I do. The Bible tells us that's exactly what's going to happen. There will be idol worship in the last days. Revelation chapter 13 tells us that. Revelation chapter 13 talks about a man who is the Antichrist, who's called the beast. And it says all the world will worship the first beast, Revelation 13, 12. And as you read through there, the Bible says, And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads. And guess what? Verse 15. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. So the mark of the beast is more than just the mark of the beast. It's the image of the beast. And if you don't take the beast's mark, now you got to worship. You worship the image. 
then what happens to you? You are killed. You are beheaded if you do not go along with a massive global idol worship of the devil. Because this is talking about the Antichrist, who eventually will become not just the man of sin, but the son of perdition, which will literally have Satan inside of him. He becomes the worldwide idol, and death to all who will not worship him or take his mark. Mm. That's horrible. That's horrible. So yeah, I can see the world heading the way of the way it used to be. What kept the world from being so evil? Christianity. The Bible. But now they're attacking that and against that, and now the world's going to go back to this idol worship. And look where it leads. It leads to evil. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 14. Verse 14. Wherefore, my dearly beloved, flee from idolatry. That's what Paul tells us. Paul tells us to get away from idols. Let's go to Isaiah chapter 45. I've got just a few more verses. But I wanted to do this today and bring to you what idol worship is, but where also idol worship leads. Because idol worship will always lead you into the arms of Satan, the arms of sin, and being demonically oppressed and deceived by evil spirits. That's why I say we shouldn't have any idols. We shouldn't even have American idols, the way I look at it. Isaiah chapter 45, verse 5. By the way, did you watch the Grammys this year? I don't watch that garbage. But I heard about it. They had people get up there with the red top hat and horns. And they said, we're worshiping. And they all danced like they were in hell. And they were dressed like Satan and unclean spirits. The world is already headed the way of satanic worship. And it's all starting by making idols. And then those idols come and sing. And then those idols say, hey, look at us. We're like Satan. You should come over here with us. And they worship the devil. Do you not see where it's going to end up? You know, the only hope is Jesus Christ. Isaiah chapter 45, verse 5 and 6. I am the Lord. This is the true God. And there is none else. There is no God beside me. I girded thee, though thou hast not known me. That they may know from the rising of the sun and from the west that there is none beside me. I am the Lord. And there is none else. Verse 18. For thus saith the Lord that created the heavens, God himself that formed the earth and made it. He hath established it, he created it not in vain. He formed it to be inhabited. I am the Lord, and there is none else. I have not spoken in secret in a dark place of the earth. I said not unto the seed of Jacob, Seek ye me in vain. I, the Lord, speak righteousness. I declare things that are right. So God is true, and God is right. Look at verse 20. Assemble yourselves and come, draw near together, ye that are escaped of the nations, that have no knowledge that set up the wood of their graven image, and pray unto a God that cannot save. Did you read that? These false gods cannot save you. If you choose them, they will take you to hell. If you choose Jesus, he will take you to heaven, because only he can save. Verse 21, toward the end of the verse, for sake of time, he says he is the Lord. And there's none, no God else besides me, a just God and a Savior. There is none besides me. Look unto me and be ye saved, all the ends of the earth, for I am God and there's none else. Are you saved? Do you want that true God or do you want to follow these false gods that ask you to sacrifice and even sell your soul to them? Do you want those? The true God, he doesn't ask you to sacrifice humans to him. The true God loved you enough, he sacrificed himself for you. On the hill of Calvary, the true God, Jesus Christ, died for your sins. On a hill called Calvary, Jesus my Lord suffered for me. Carried my sins to the cross, my sin to atone. Then they nailed him to the cross, great was the pain and the loss. He suffered it all because he loved me. You see, the true God is a God of love. And he loved you enough he'd rather die than see you go to hell. But the false God is Satan. And he wants you to harm others. He wants you to hurt other people. And he wants to hurt you. He wants you to sell your soul to him so he can have you in hell for all eternity. Have you chosen 
The Bible says, choose you this day whom you will serve. If you got any idols, you should get rid of them. 1 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 15. This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, whom I am chief. Jesus Christ is God. He is the Word, capital W. Now turn over quickly to the book of James. So Jesus Christ, the Word, capital W, is the only one that saves. Jesus. He's the capital W-O-R-D. But he tells us that the way you find him is through his word, lowercase w, the Bible. So Jesus saves, and the word saves. And James chapter 1 and verse 21 says, Wherefore lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness. Oh, worshiping idols is being naughty, being dirty, being filthy. And receive with meekness the engrafted word, which is able to save your soul. Are you saved? I would recommend you get a King James Bible and begin reading in the book of Romans. And go through that book until you find God. Because He's the only true God that loves you and wants to save you. There's a lot of false gods out there. And they've got demons they want to latch on to you and lead you in the path of evil. Trust Jesus Christ's blood atonement for salvation. Trust what He did for you for salvation. I'm going to close today with the book of Psalms, chapter 97. Psalms, chapter 97, and verse 1. And I hope, if you have any idols, now it doesn't have to be a piece of stone or silver or something. Sometimes people set up idols in their heart that they worship. You need to get that out of there and worship the true God. Because He's the only one that saves. Psalms, chapter 97, verse 1. The Lord reigneth, that's the true God, let the earth rejoice, let the multitude of isles be glad thereof. Now skip down to verse 5. The hills melted like wax at the presence of the Lord, at the presence of the Lord of the whole earth. The heavens declare his righteousness, and all the people see his glory. Confounded be all they that serve graven images, that boast themselves of idols. Worship him, all ye gods. Zion heard and was glad, and the daughters of Judah rejoiced because of thy judgments, O Lord. For thou, Lord, art high above all the earth. Thou art exalted far above all gods. I'm thankful that I have the true God and not some false God. Now look at verse 10. Ye that love the Lord hate evil. He preserveth the souls of his saints. He delivereth them out of the hand of the wicked. Someday the wicked's going to take over this world. And only God can deliver you from the evil to come. Do you have Jesus Christ? Or do you worship an idol? This is what the Bible says that idol worship is. And some people love that. And they want all of this. And they're so blind, they can't even see they're being led by demonic spirits to do evil things. But it's not too late. Turn from your wicked idols. Turn to Jesus for salvation. And the Bible says through faith you can be saved and go to heaven when you die. I hope you get saved. If you get saved, please write to me. Let me know. I'd love to hear that you got saved through this video. Please come to Jesus Christ. Get you a King James Bible. God bless you. We'll see you next week if the good Lord willing. Bye-bye.